Hello, everybody. Oh, good evening, Mika. I hope you can hear me. Okay, people are coming, great. Uh, let's just wait for a minute or two or three, I don't know, until people arrive. So, good evening, everybody. Thank you for participating again in this uh, second part or part two of our lecture started last time on the relation between Genesis and uh, contemporary sciences. I just want to discuss a few more things important for us for understanding the relation between religion and sciences, in fact, Christian religion, Christian faith, and modern science, uh, scientific discoveries, scientific theories, how to try to understand them, where is the point of reconciliation between them, where is the point of like not touching each other. Um, Okay, I can start right now so people can join us later. And for this reason, I will just go sharing the screen. Okay, so last time, um, my friend- I just wanna, excuse me for interruption. Um, there is a problem logging in with the, with the computer, only with the phone, and there is no option to see your screen from oh, the phone. Well, you, can, you can go to the option of share screen um, in the bottom of your Zoom, if you can open the Zoom, and you go... Uh, I open the Zoom through the phone, but it, uh, on the computer, it doesn't let me join, me, join meeting. It says it's a wrong... Oh, maybe you didn't install Zoom, but you can quickly do that. It's like a matter of less than a minute. You, you can be done. That's fine. If you want, you can try. Um, or what else we can do? I don't know. Hmm. Did anybody join uh, the Zoom meeting with the ID uh, that was provided? Yes, people mostly do that. So far, I know. Yes, like they, they just... I, I did that before, but this time it doesn't work. Oh, so did you try like... Uh, Touching yeah. the link, opening the link. Yeah, yeah. And you cannot see the screen. No, on the phone I cannot see the screen. It's only audio. Well, but, okay. uh, I it's couldn't join in on the. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what to do exactly at this point. Um, let's try to see. Okay. Um, do you want me to resend this link or something? Oh, now it's okay. Now it's working. So oh, now it's working. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. You. Well, I hope you now can see. <laughs> well, okay, there are a few of us right now. If anybody joins later, I'll just go very quick about this, some short overviews. So, like, as you might remember, Blagoy, uh, my friend and colleague, and PhD in physics, uh, presented last time the modern cosmology and uh, linked it with uh, our Christian faith, uh, talked about Big Bang Theory and how it's related, how we can interpret this. In general, I wanted to touch several modern science or fact, in fact, theories. One was this, like modern physics and cosmology, including the Big Bang, the other was uh, biogenesis or abiogenesis, uh, like uh, beginning or, uh, or origins of the organic 
compounds, in fact, organic or, or, or origins of life on Earth, which means how the life started from inorganic matter. Then the third point was so controversial, uh, evolutionary biology or a theory of evolution. And uh, at the last, uh, some uh, geological points like uh, geology and geological periods of Earth, which are also part of the scientific knowings right now in contemporary science. Here we can include also few uh, biblical stories that come into this uh, about the, uh, let's say, the, the past, the geological past, or even the past during the human history on Earth such like uh, the big flood or flood from the Old Testament, which is described there. And the other is uh, like um, uh, the existence of giants on earth, which is also part of descriptions in the Old Testament, which can put some readers in confusion. So let's start from this. Uh, I will set apart this about Big Bang Theory, uh, since Blago represented it last time. But now, uh let's go let me see okay let's go first uh, about geology here um uh, that was question last time how we can reconcile uh the, the age of earth in fact how old the planet earth is uh, based on geological evidences that there are some layers in the lithosphere in fact in the in the core of the earth we can see uh, those uh, how do you say ge geological sediments and based on the chemical or physical analysis of the isotopes such as uh, carbon 14 or some other isotopes you can uh, determine the age of some object you analyze in fact the, the, the chemical you analyze or which contains that carbon and that's the same with the rocks sediments so based on that evidence it said that the age of the earth uh, is in the scale of uh, billions of years so does it make any problem with our fate i would say no because we don't know anything about how long it took god for creating in a let's say in a point of the modern or contemporary <laughs> understanding the time because we cannot say what it was in past during the creation of the world of, of everything of the cosmos based uh, on the, our fate where we say that it's done by god so we cannot say on the time scale how much it took uh, it's not a matter even of Bible that uh, we can say that Bible is in uh, opposition to something. It's not neither in opposition or in, a, uh, let's say, alignment, because there is no talking about the time scale. So this is completely um, arbitrarily for us. How we want to understand or accept or not, uh, it doesn't. I just want to say that um, geological science here would not touch our fate, not in some kind of uh, like uh, opposition or anything in the contrary to what we believe. Because um, whether it is like older or newer, <laughs> or how to say, like uh, older age of the earth or, or like more or less, it, it does not affect uh, the essence of our existence and our salvation in God. So, uh, it, 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 what what can more matter us? What can more like uh, tangle us is like the let's say uh, the age of the human race or the, the humans when the humans are put in being or in existence. That's something that might touch us more. But it, even that is, as I will say later, not something that should touch our fate, because I, as I can repeat here. Bible story about the Genesis, uh, the uh, creation of the world, does not state any statement about the time scale. Uh, the only what we read there is days, like uh, first day, second day, day one, day two, whatever. But still, we cannot say what the sense of that day was. So, 
That's something that also Blogway discussed last time. That's something that uh, we also can put our faith on a kind of test. We may uh, accept that God can create something in a, or, or everything in, in a time scale of a few days. Definitely, that is not impossible for him because as we believe in God who is omnipotent, who is, let's say, powerful to do whatever he wants, it does not uh, present any kind of, um, let's say, obstacle for him. So that's some point about this. I wouldn't go at this point in detail. We can discuss later if you want. The other thing is the creation of the living world, creation of life. That is really problem. That's really problematic even for science. Um, very few, very brief um, overview. Um, the first theory, the first uh, scientific research on this matter, on this subject, started in, uh, let's say, early 20th century, about uh, 1920s. Uh, there were two scientists who contributed mostly the beginning of this theory, who gave this model of the creation of life at first. Those were Alexander Oparin, Ru Russian um, scientist, and uh, British scientist uh, John Haldane. They stepped out with a theory done independently, one and the other one. Uh, about the abiogenetic uh, or how to say, abiogenetical synthesis, or which means uh, synthesis without uh, uh, the presence of organic matters, so that uh, from the inorganic elements and material, there was a creation of the organic or, uh, or bioorganic uh, compounds. The most crucial question here was uh, what was the how to say, the ambient uh, or uh, how to say, uh, what circumstances needed for the creation uh, of some uh, biochemical compound, which is necessary for uh, something to be said that it's a, a living uh, subject, that it's in fact the, something where the, the life is. The most important here is the proteins. So I hope you have general uh, understanding of this compound, like proteins, which are uh, main gradient compound of our bodies and in, in general of the, the living cell as the unit of life. And uh, nucleotic acids, which are main uh, gradients of uh, DNA and RNA as the molecules which are keeping and preserving the information about the synthesis and creation of the living cells and everything in general. So the question was how proteins were created and how nucle nucleic acids were created. So Oparin and Haldane proposed that there was so-called primordial soup or uh, primeval soup. Uh, in fact, it is a, a water or like we can imagine as a maritime uh, surfaces and um, like sea, ocean, whatever, with um, some uh, biomolecules or uh, precursors, elements and uh, parts which were later compounded into the organic compound. But for that, uh, in order to create from these precursors into the real existing organic compounds such as uh, uh, amino acid or uh, nucleic acid, we needed some uh, electrical charge, discharge, I mean, electrical discharge, which means a light from sky, lightning, or some kind of radiation, again, like cosmic radiation, which uh, provides enough energy so that some uh, precursors or elements create the cell. What is this related to our faith, to our religion, to Christianity, in fact? Uh, can we say that this is in opposition? No, we cannot, because we don't know again the act, how God creates 
the first living from something that's uh, inorganic. Like when I say inorganic, there is no life there. And when I say like bioorganic, it means like uh, the life uh, started on, like it's created origins from there. So how something inorganic was created to become uh, able of uh, reproducing proteins, which in fact in, in means the life. Life in a modern, in a modern definition means uh, a capability of uh, reproduction DNA and uh, creating proteins. So like the, the activity of DNA through the RNA into creating of amino acids into proteins. So how this was put uh, in, a, let's say, set on, how it was set on uh, is again not a matter of the description or uh, interpretation of our uh, uh, holy tradition or uh, holy testaments, like the Old and New Testament. We do not have the words about that. So how God creates this is not uh, the matter of... Uh, let's say, kind of uh, controversial aspects about the sciences here. So, again, we can say that uh, scientific discoveries and scientific theories here uh, do not come into collision with our faith. Uh, the, the aspect which may come into the collision is whether this was statistical event, accidental event, that uh, the life was created from energetic matter, or it was designed and done by God. And st uh, still, science won't say anything about that. Who was behind this? Because that's the main question in general in science. Science uh, responds to questions how something happens and how something might have happened in the past, but not that it says um, why or what's the cause or reason behind everything like what's the the sense of our life what's the the points of uh, our existence why we exist where do we go that's more philosophical questions we can say or in, it's in fact in the religious questions of our being but it does not uh, come into like alignment or, or disalignment with science that's important to say okay so the third point is the most controversial like how the development of the living organisms uh, occurred whether it happened like uh, separately that each organism each species created separately or it's just kind of pouring one from the another one just uh, descending one from the other one as it is said by the theory of evolution this theory as you might know was first proposed in mid 19th century by charles darwin uh, after his um, big long trip around the world in the expedition as a young botanist, a young scientist who, who wanted to analyze uh, the species of uh, plants and animals. And from this long trip, he came back with a lot of uh, evidences which uh, gave him very uh, deep insight and important for him so that he uh, finally stepped out with the theory that there is a way that uh, some lower level organisms uh, were uh, progressing and uh, like developing more and more so that there were uh, creation of the more complex organisms from less complex organisms through the process of evolution. This theory was and would be <laughs> remembered forever as um, one of the most criticized theories and the other side one of the most elegant uh, scientific theories as uh, given itself um, so there are many evidences by now particularly in last five six decades that uh, the evolution as a mechanism definitely exists we have like many many millions of proofs for that but this uh, still is not the point of whether uh, the world was created in this or that way. That's something that is most possible or most probable, whatever we can say, uh, that uh, the creation could have happened through this way. Uh, the problem is that uh, this um, scientific uh, discipline, like this part of biology, in fact, evolution of biology, uh, the problem is that it is not uh, reproducible. 
because it's a matter of the past. Definitely, uh, the evolution theory, most of that refers to the past, to how it have happened that uh, the creation occurred after many, many um, millions or thousands of years and so on. So, um, the, yeah, as I say, uh, it might be many misinterpretations of um, the theory of evolution uh, due to the understanding that it means that uh, like uh, humans uh, originate from the lower level organisms it's some kind of uh, blasphemy or that it's a way that uh, uh, the gods uh, creating act is underestimated by this uh, but again i would say it would not be the case because again we don't know how god is creating the world although we have the evidences uh, given in the book of genesis in the first chapter we cannot say whether it is just to take him some uh, moments from his creation and describe and given as like, well, you, you can imagine this as, for instance, you s put some seed in, in ground, you plant some uh, whatever, let's say tree, and you want to see it uh, once uh, a month, every month, let's say. And you come and see first time just kind of um, small uh, parts of the plant, uh, rising up out from the ground from the soil then later next month you see some structures on the plant already you just occurring appearing then later next month you might see some leaves and branches developing and so on and, and eventually you see flowers you see fruits whatever and so on so this is the same how we can uh, uh, understand the days as described there that uh, uh, it's, it might be just moments in the continual act of creation. That's one point. The other point is it might be uh, a real uh, aspect that God might have created everything independently, but it looks like it's just getting one from the other. That's also possible, although it sounds a bit, uh, let's say, uh, to well well i don't know how to what's the proper term uh we can ask why would god uh creating this way if he at the same time put the uh, evolution in existence this mechanism of uh, evolution of the species one from the other one why then god would be uh, creating something separately but i just want to say that uh, it's again a matter of our faith we can say, we should say, if we really believe in omnipotent God, that he can create us. He can create even disobeying his laws. <laughs> it sounds sometimes maybe a bit um, ununderstandable why it should be this way. But anyway, uh, if we ask whether it's possible, well, it is possible. Whether it's more or less... Uh, let's say, uh, probable that that's something else. That's something other than the other question. Okay, let me just uh, complete this uh, overview about evolution. As we know, uh, there are two main cornerstones of the evolution theory. As uh, such, given from the time of Darwin until now, there are the cornerstones. One is uh, mutation, the possibility of the changing of the properties of species inside one species, specimen, let's say, or like species. So that would, this is a pivotal point. This is a generating force, or like, let's say impedant force to create um, another species from one. And what it means, it's like, uh, as we know, mutations are a matter of uh, uh, genes of DNA. In fact, there are, for some reason, uh like misalignments or uh, some kind of um, mistakes during the dna replication or during the transcription and protein synthesis whatever which cause the changes in the properties of one separate organism and by such it gives uh, a potential of creating a different specimen in time, particularly if there are geographical separation of the population of the same species, let's say some birds as I sh showed here in the picture. So you have uh, changing 
uh, in some properties of their heads, of um, uh, some other whatever organs and then anything else, uh, the collar or whatever. All this is matter of mutations. So mutations are the, let's say, the opening doors for the possibility of the evolution here, uh, evolution mechan mechanism to be active. And the other cornerstone in the evolution theory is natural selection, which means uh, among all those variations created by mutations in one same sp species, there is uh, uh, the different, uh, how to say, um, um, capability of uh, surviving, survival, in fact. So that those uh, with uh, such uh, variations or such uh, properties that are not uh, improvement uh, in, in a way that they can better uh, survive against um, the other, let's say, uh, predators or whatever, those specimens just uh, vanish, disappear due to the less viability. Like that's a matter of viability, in fact. So viability means uh, whether uh, the adaptation of the specific mutation is possible more or less. And that's the other cornerstone, which means, okay, those who are better ad adapted will survive. Uh, here I just represented one, um, let's say, about, about mice and how they can survive if they're more hidden in the background or something like that. That means like which of those species will be able to survive. Again, um, here is uh, the matter that uh, evolution uh, considers uh, something like a tree uh, in the development of these species so that there is a primordial uh, living organism which is given by previously described abiotic uh, theory. So now we have like, uh, let's say first cell from which there was a development of a whole the system of the organisms on earth, both plants, animals, everything and humans. But the point is that it might not be uh, the same, one and same branch, one and same tree from which it just develops, but it might be different uh, separated trees, although it's, it is assumed by evolution theory that it's just one point so that everything rad radially develops from one. As you can see here in these branches, like um, uh, it, it develops uh, partially separately, not that all are just getting from the same way. And this is exactly what I'm talking about right now. So at this tree, tree of evolution given by the evolution theory, we can imagine uh, if we want this, like just to, to understand how God can create this. Uh, not only that God put uh, his finger uh, like beginning on, on the, uh, let's say, rooting point of this tree and then everything just was put uh, in the mechanism of evolution by God's will and then God just uh, leave it apart to develop according to this uh, evolutionary law, to these laws, in fact. There are a few of them. So that's the one possibility how we can approach this. But the other one is that we can say that God might uh, intervene, in fact, uh, act as a creator in the separate stages of these big central part of this tree, so that it acts, uh, whatever, in, in the point of fish or the, the living world in the sea as a separate creating this, <laughs> separate for each specimen or separate for each specimen on the higher levels on this tree so that it uh, appears as if it was created one from the other one and it can be created one from the other one but in the fact that god could be creator everything separately so whatever i we can discuss it more maybe this sounds a bit blurred at this point but we can clarify it later it would be important just also to mention some weak points of this theory. Um, this uh, weak, when I say weak points, it doesn't mean that this theory is undermined, uh, or we can better say that every 
scientific theory is partially undermined. There are always some things that might be like not yet clarified or won't be ever clarified so that this theory might be replaced by some other better describing theory. That's in fact the, let's say, kind of other theory, theory of scientific revolutions, how one theory is replaced by the other. That's why I recommended last time the book uh, by Thomas Kuhn, the structure of scientific revolutions. I just put this here on this slide. So you can <clears throat> understand that every theory, like Big Bang now in physics, which is actual theory, which is like um, valid theory at this point, doesn't mean that uh, it won't be replaced by theory which might be developed later, future, which would be better describing the evidences which we have through the measures, through the um, uh, um, analysis of the whatever uh, cosmical uh, evidences, signals. Um, in, in general, that's the same for evolution. Uh, evolution theory is the theory which is, uh, let's say, valid and uh, the best describing the evidences in biology for the past 150 years or a little bit more. But it doesn't mean that it won't, it might not be re uh, replaced in future by some other better theory. Okay, so the main weak points here are the lack of evidences of the specimen or varieties uh, either in time or in a, let's say, contemporary time, but between uh, closely related species, which means uh, uh, we don't see it immediately right now, those variations in such a huge matter, like we, we can see in some species, for instance, uh, like dog breeds or something like that. But uh, for many other um, species in the animal and plant lives, we do not see that. That's the first point. The other point is we don't, which is more important, the other point is more important that we don't see it in time, which means the fossil uh, remains. We can find some of them, but it's still not the continual, uh, let's say, uh, spectra of those uh, intermediate organisms between one species and the other. For instance, like this from um, the reptiles into the birds, we have Archaeopteryx. But uh, that's just one of this. We lack the waste of majority of those um, <laughs> other expected intermediate uh, varieties. Then another possible for, um, weak point for mentioning here is um, some existing of some organs of uh, little importance like appendix in bowels in humans in all the mammalians, but uh, many other, uh, uh, let's say, not the improvements through the evolution. So, which means like some organs do not represent something better, some improvement comparing it to the previous lower level of the existence of the life. Which means why it happens, like if there is uh, that only the better organisms or better improvements and varieties, uh, variations, are those which are survivable, why even those which are less survivable still survive? <laughs> and uh, uh, based on the fact that there might be also the um, propagation of the species and the creation of new species through uh, the hybridization, which means, uh, uh, let's say, sexual contact between different species, uh, then why uh, there is also uh, less viability in hybrid species, as we can see in many of those where we try to, let's say, uh, breed uh, some uh, Animals which are close relatives, but not the same species, it's not viable, for instance, like dogs and cats, they belong to the same family of carnivora, but they cannot produce a viable um, organism as a descendant. And the other is also uh, non-fertility, sterility of some of those species, like I presented here, mule, for instance, like a mixture between horse and uh, donkeys. 
So it also do not give in favor of the evolution, but uh, in contrary, it disfavors this mechanism, uh, at least in some stages. So we need more evidence. E even if uh, biologists want to support the evolution, they must search for more, better uh, theoretical explanation for this. Anyway, and let's not spend all the time just my talking. Let's give some opportunity for you to discuss and then just make some uh, questions and so on. Okay, I want to say um, also some archaeological aspects, uh, what uh, and how to uh, approach the story of the flood on Earth, whether it was really the flood, um, the event which just uh, caused uh, the death of uh, all the existing uh, life on Earth, at least all non uh, aqueous life, which means like uh, life on the continents, uh, but those maybe in, in the seas, <laughs> of course they survived. So at, at least it was uh, the destruction of the human race, all but uh, uh, the family of Noah, as it's given in the story of, uh, Je of uh, Flood. Uh, the problem here is, uh, why would God be acting in this way, first of all? Well, it's not a matter of sciences, first. <laughs> and the second, um, uh, we can say that there are some evidences uh, that such a cataclysms might have occurred in the past, uh, not knowing whether it is uh, fully possible to correlate with the story given in Genesis, but uh, there are evidence like... Uh, that there are some uh, fossil graveyards from uh, the early quarter, the last geological period in, in the earth, when there were like mammoths uh, and the other uh, animals at the time, which, uh, whose fossils we can find in the sediments, whose fossils we can also find in uh, the frozen, in the uh, glacial uh, areas and so on. So, there is the evidence, at least, also in, in uh, some mountains, there is a changing of the vegetation of the uh, plants up to some level, which might give uh, rise to the theory that uh, there were some areas on Earth, at least in the old continents, including Europe, uh, Asia, and Africa, where there was uh, not such a, a destruction. And this destruction might have come from the climate change. So, which is given by many theories among them. One of the most important contributions in this was the theory of glaciation given by our Serbian scientist, Milutin Milanković. So that there is a possibility that there was um, a melting of the ice and flooding for such a huge uh, size and uh, let's say um, dimensions uh, that it was like so destructive to a uh, waste majority of population. If we imagine that the early stage of the human existence on the earth, there were not like uh, the equal and uniform distribution of the human population all over the, the continents, the world, but maybe it was like uh, they were concentrated somewhere, let's say Middle East or some parts. There are also some supporting theories from history, from like um, ancient history, like 2000 years before Christ or so on, or even later, that uh, Europe, for instance, were not uh, settled, were not settleable because there were many forests and woods. Uh, so the vegetation there was not so favorable for the settlements and the ancient period. So that's why the Mediterranean only was uh, like more densely settled, uh, populated, same like Middle East, same some uh, territories like um, Indian subcontinent or uh, Far East, like uh, in China, in some uh, uh, river valleys, like uh, around big rivers and so on. So it was uh, very rarely densely, uh, the, rarely, uh, um, how to say, um, populated uh, the territory of uh, the continents, the old world. Probably it was the same with the new world. So as we know from uh, like uh, theories of migrations in past, in like very old past, that uh, this um, new continent was settled by um, so-called yellow race, by the race which is like um, it's a Mongolian race or so on, how we called it, uh, from the Eastern Asian uh, part 
over the Alaska territories and so on, you know. So we might give some support for this, uh, that th there was a big cataclysm, which uh, is uh, correlating with uh, flood. We can discuss it more if you want this about. And finally, the giants on Earth, as I m m mentioned, it is also possible, based on uh, the evidence from the archaeology, that uh, the, the human stature was bigger in some old time. But it's, it's hard to say when exactly, but like these skeletons found like over seven, sometimes even over eight or nine feet were surprising. Okay, we might see, okay, it might be just acromegaly, the, the disease of the um, hypophysis, uh, the gland hypophysis, one of uh, the most important uh, human plants, uh, you know, human organism, uh, which cause uh, uncontrolling uh, growth and the development of the limbs and so on. That might be the case, but uh, it, it, it in fact uh, was a larger population of uh, not just one specific specimen of the skeleton, which can be ascribed to specific disease, but uh, it would be like an epidemic disease of something that is not epidemic, <laughs> such like the acromegaly, which <laughs> is not like caused by some kind of virus or whatever bacteria. It is just uh, um, more ascribed to the autoimmune or uh, caused by mutations, which is unlike that it caused for many specimens at the same time, same in the whole population and some territory and so on. So it's something that... Uh, the science would have to say the last word about this, last word, um, I mean, to give some kind of explanation. Most of this is just ascribed to some kind of accident or accidentally some persons, whatever, had some disease or just had more growth, whatever. But in general, uh, this is something that comes aligned with uh, what is given in the stories uh, about uh, the early, uh, Jewish history, or even before that, when we have stories about Noah and before Noah, that there were like giants, and there were um, that some of uh, descendants from Noah, uh, some daughters or granddaughters, grand grand granddaughters, whatever, uh, uh, were married to some very giant people, and so on. <laughs> we will come to that point maybe in next lecture, so that you can understand it more. And it's also a short, brief review about some uh, uh, particular persons from the Old Testament, which are described there as a very uh, giant stature persons and so on. Okay, so I would like to stop at this point and give you the opportunity to make some discussion. So thank you for your attention and please do not hesitate to ask or to comment whatever. It would be more fruitful. Thank you. Okay, so I remove this screen sharing. So, does anybody want to give any comment, any question, any review, whatever? I do find it interesting how um, a lot of people who say they believe in evolution give it a very theological tint, color, because like they say like, they, what they really believe is the chain of being, you know, like elephant standing on a tortoise and on the tortoise is a sheep and on the sheep is a man or something like that. They believe in like, there's some sort of like hierarchy and man is the apex, which I mean, I, a lot of scientists would say, but I don't think evolution says that man is supreme. Um, I think, well, that's my a understanding good point. of that's evolution a really good is point. that. Thank you, Blagoy. This is really good equal. point. Yeah, because according to the tree, this which I represent as a tree of life based on evolution, it's just one branch. Yeah. And uh, it's not that like it's uh, uh, developing better and better in, in hierarchy, as, as you say, but it's just kind of branches from the same tree. There is one and same, uh, how do you say, the main part of the tree, like column. Uh, from where the branch, branches are coming and some branches like give, well, for instance, like birds, the other one gives some mammals and the other one gives whatever. And some of them gives also like <laughs> those coming to monkeys and humans based on, on evolution. So, well, it's not the tree as we expect based on uh, 
the first maybe like um, how to say um, logical <laughs> or common sense uh, understanding of uh, evolution that is just as Blagoj say getting from lower to better 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 and just uh, like climbing up and up it's, it's just uh, uh, branching many many branching so the point is it might be that it's not the same tree it might be that it's different points from different trees <laughs> and that's what I mentioned we do not know exactly why and what's the really supportive uh, and massively supportive um, uh, let's say proof or proofs many of them which would be uh, given for uh, to say that it's just one tree with those branches on different levels. This is something that uh, evolution is more to say about to, to come to that point, but not yet that it can prove that it's really this or that kind of tree. So it is, um, it is something really important. It is um, that we also cannot uh, uh, say that every stage of that tree is equally, how to say, clear. Some of them have some um, weak points, as we say, because all the tree is based on the evidences from the past, from the archaeological fossil uh, remains, whatever. If you do not have that, then you can just suppose, okay, we have some similarities that this comes from that, but uh, definitely the lack of huge amount of intermediate species makes this uh, story about the life tree difficult. So that's a good point. In fact, that's why it gives rise to what I want to say. We should be believing that God can create it even without evolution. Although it, he at the same time puts the evolution ex in existence. <laughs> this, this is also, at least for me, uh, an optional, uh, how to say, optional um, hypothesis or even theory. But well, it's hard to, to uh, give either proofs for or proof, uh, proofs against that, because it's something that has passed. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Oh, thank you, Mika. Um, on that tree, a man is a rational animal and he has free will. Where does that fit in? Because animal does not. Oh, you mean why? Why it's ascribed as described as a um, rational animal? Why it's rational when 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 the animals are not rational? You you mean that, right? Right, right, and and yes, yes. Well, based on at least those, uh, let's say, non-believing or atheistic uh, scientists, I would say that uh, uh, they want to say that from that point. Uh, from the monkeys to the humans, there was a development of the cortex of brain, which bro gave them or gave us humans this capability of being like uh, some novel uh, property. In fact, this uh, rational and uh, like mind, whatever, which was not the case for the whole, whole of the rest of the animals. That's what they describe it, as you say. But uh, on the other side, well, this is based on our faith and our Christian faith, something that makes us a sharp and a crucial in, in, a distinction from the rest of the creation. We were granted uh, Free will. gift of the ratio, in fact, of the likeness and image to God, which is, in fact, our capability of uh, thinking, of understanding, of, uh, how to say, um, comprehension and uh, just uh, con consciousness, which is not the case for the rest of the animal world. And well, that's the other point which we can discuss. It, it might be the separate <laughs> scientific um, discipline is like uh, brain science. So it's also a very weak point in the, in the <laughs> of the sciences, how the brain science is also weak in describing uh, how the development of the human brain came to that level so that there is such sharp distinction and improvement comparing to the other animal world. Good. Yes. What, what made us, what made us in a like molecular biology level uh, or like a cellular level 
that we got this uh, capability. Although when you analyze, for instance, like lower animals, for instance, cats or whatever, rats, brain, you see also the existence of the similar structures, the synapses, the um, kind of uh, short brain, uh, short memory circuits and whatever it's also found in human organism, in human brain, but we still cannot understand how, based on these findings, we can describe what is our higher consciousness comparing to this like instinctive um, brain ac activities in the lower animals. So, um, well, yeah, that's, that's a long story. <laughs> I think the biggest um, a stumbling block for um, the science world to explain is that they can replicate life in a test tube or create um, life from life, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something that is in, in a biogenesis, biogenetic right. synthesis, in fact. They try to, to repl uh, do they replicate this. They cannot create life. They succeeded it. Actually. Well, they, cannot. they succeeded to create amino acids. They succeeded to create separately um, nucleic acids. It was even back in the 50s, some scientists from UC Berkeley, which I come from. So it's interesting. But uh, I mean, uh, it, although they created the precursors, they created the um, compounds which are important for creating the living cell, they could not the provoke formation of the cell or even the virus or something lowest level organism, the life organism, so or living organization, in fact. But that's the problem. When you create uh, biological molecules, which are uh, tightly connected with uh, the life, starting to but it, Craig, you have to create it. It doesn't, or it doesn't instant, it doesn't happen on its own volition. It, even the nucleic acids, they have to manipulate the, they have to create those nucleic acids. They don't spontaneously occur. Yeah, they do not spontaneously. No, 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 exactly. They do not spontaneously create them. That They provoked um, creating some kind of uh, uh, electrical discharge, creating a, a, a radiation, which tried to imitate the, in, uh, the conditions on Earth at the time when the life started. They tried to see whether it can just occur as kind of statistical or accidental event. And it's very little that they succeeded in this. It must be said, like even based on this Ari and Miller synthesis, they created amino acids at that time. Way, way later on, uh, also it, it was possible to create purine bases, but it was also not in the, the fully uh, expected ambient. So that was a little bit more artificial than it would be on the existing earth at that time. So, well, it's just a kind of approximation, not yet really close to what it was, the real condition on earth, that, like before the creation of the existence of the life. So yeah, you're absolutely right. This is a weak point, way more weak weaker than uh, the evolution theory. We can even say, okay, once we have some living, whatever, cell organism, then we can maybe um, um, debate over this, whether it's possible to create an improvement, uh, getting from one species to the other, but to create life itself at the beginning is the most critical point. <laughs> well, and the discovery of DNA and the, the order of life, it doesn't come from chaos. Life comes from design. It's intelligent design, and it doesn't happen with a big bang. It happens with intelligent design. So you can have an apple and you can have an orange. They both come from a tree, but you're not going to have an apple come out of an orange tree. Same with human beings and apes. If you, if you have the DNA of an ape, guess what? You're not a human being. Right. Just saying. Yes, yes, yes. But that's, well, many, many things that we can discuss now here. You can find a DNA in 90% similar to maybe human DNA, even to pro prokaryote, in prokaryote cells, in a very, very low organizing level of the life. Which doesn't mean that, okay, so we are the same with what it is. So which means uh, it comes from the same origin, but not that uh, this, that same origin generates us from the prokaryote bacteria that we through the evolution goes to creating humans at the end. No, it just means that 
uh, it might be that God creates us from whatever it was initially and then he separately creates every specimen independently. So it's still possible. I mean, however, whatever it sounds uh, more or less, uh, let's say, aligned with the scientific um, way of thinking, but uh, this is the conclusion of even the scientific uh, evidence here. When you have such a level of similarity in DNA, it still does not mean which of those genes will be expressed or not. And that's, that's a huge problem again, like gene expression, not just gene evolution itself. Okay, thank you, Carol. Any other question? Want to discuss? Nikola is <laughs> turning the light on, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Coming uh, from the darkness. Yeah. Uh, hi. I would like to read a question from the chat, if, if, if you would allow, because uh, uh, Dan McLellan, um, his mic uh, doesn't seem to be uh, working well. So if you could read that from the chat, or maybe I could read it. Can, can you say it again? I didn't understand what's the what's the question. Yeah, so, 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 yeah. So the uh, uh, question is: so it seems that a critical point in the Bible that the, the uh, distinguishes the human race from all other creation okay. was the moment when God breathed uh, His own life into Adam, uh, apparently a kind of stamp of uh, divinity uh, uniquely bestowed on our species. Is there any scientific distinction between people and animals that might end uh, at something like that, which really sets us apart? That sets us apart between animals and, and humans. Uh, as I say, uh, based on our faith, it's like uh, image and likeness of God, which means giving our free freedom or free will uh, and consciousness. Uh, the capability which is not given to the other animal lives. Mm -hmm. That's the very unique and, and uh, like, let's say, <laughs> easy to respond on this. But, uh, well, how it is like, given and uh, what is in fact that which is uh, that's contained yeah, in our there, free will and freedom. Yeah, so, so is there any scientific evidence that that was the question? Well, scientific evidence, well, uh, <laughs> um, uh, depending how you base the science, when you say science, you can say even psychology or like brain sciences, uh, whatever, psychiatry, pathology, even physiology. Okay, so uh, psychology would say, okay, we definitely have some kind of uh, abilities which are sharply, distinctively different from the other world. Okay, we have this uh, cognitive aspects and uh, that's it but uh, when you say when you put it on a phys physiological or molecular level you see okay cells are very similar to that cell in, in whatever other organisms uh, what science can say okay the development of the brain cortex it's uh, sharply different from even monkeys uh, I'm not sure how do we say it in English uh, the, the, um, the parts of the brain cortex, which means like kind of uh, curvatures in between, which means that the relief of the cortex itself is way more complex and the way more, way bigger surface in total because there is like, uh, you know, some kind of uh, like uh, uh, carvings or like valleys or how I can describe it, describe this um, in that structure. Sorry for missing the proper medical terms in English about this. Um, but in general, okay, definitely the development uh, of the brain cortex caused way more, way bigger surface of the brain. And the whole uh, the higher level of brain activity is described, is, is ascribed to brain cortex. It's something that modern medicine can just, um, let's say, uniformly say, we, we know that. Thank you for this question, Nicola. Uh, yeah, so I was just reading the uh, Dan, Dan's question, so, yeah. Oh, there is some question in chat, sorry. No, uh, no I, sorry. I was reading, yeah, I was reading the uh, uh, question. From sorry about this, chat. yeah. I think it's the 
thank you very much. Uh, there are some more questions. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, well, we can complete this lecture if you want. We just can stop at this point. So, what what I would like to announce this time for the next week, we have a kind of surprise for everybody, for all of you. Um, uh, I would have a, a guest speaker. My dear friend, uh, Father Dragan Petrovic from Indianapolis. He's such a great uh, lecturer and preacher and priest, many talents and gifts in him. So uh, he would be giving a lecture most possibly on Thursday. I just um, expecting his confirmation. It would be Thursday, same like today, at about um, 7 p.m. a little bit earlier because you know it's uh, Midwest time in Indianapolis so it would be some good time for him as well. I hope you will be able to attend in our uh, West Coast time. It's like 7, 7 p.m. and also I uh, propose the next lecture uh, to be on Saturday. I apologize, maybe it's not proper time. I was thinking maybe Friday, but I also uh, am a bit uh, more busy than expected. Uh, and I also would like just to put forward our lecture because we stopped a little bit longer than I expected on just this subject about the uh, relation between sciences and theology. So in order to get it back to biblical history and to go through the whole, the rest of the book of Genesis, I would like just you, if you can participate and to, and the next lecture, it will be recorded as well if you want later to watch the recording. So it will be on uh, Saturday, that's July 4th, uh, on 8 p.m. So thank you very much for your attention and have a good I night. have a quick question. Oh, sure, Nada, sorry, yeah, absolutely, please. Um, for people who cannot make it at certain time, is there a possibility to um, get a, to get a recording before we continue with the next one? So we are absolutely, up absolutely. Um, that's what I just uh, remembered today that I should uh, share every time when we finish, or even not every time. I can share a uh, uh, YouTube channel with you, the YouTube channel where all these lectures are posted after the completion. So you can follow the channel and uh, watch all these recordings because every uh, particular, every separate lecture is recorded itself. So yeah, you, you can share this link and watch all the lectures whenever you want. Absolutely. Okay, can you Thank share you. that with the, with the email list please? I can share with the email list so everybody can okay. participate. Yes, that's the best solution. Thank you, Nada, for reminding me this. That's very important. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye.